Hello everyone. Welcome to video lecture series of computer organization and architecture. Today's topic is interrupt initiated IO. In this particular video, I'll be telling you what is interrupt initiated IO and what are the various techniques via which uh, interrupt implementation can be done. Either it may be via software approach or with the hardware approach. So I'll be telling you about the daisy chaining priority and parallel priority interrupts both. Let us begin. See, in the last video, I have talked about the programmed IO. So when we have discussed the programmed IO or if you recall the different modes of transfer, there were three modes of transfer, programmed IO, interrupt initiated IO and direct memory access, right? So in the programmed IO, what happened? There was a drawback because every time CPU has to check for the flag status, right? Whether the flag is set or not. When the flag is set, it means the IO device is ready for the data transfer. It means data transfer will be done. But when the flag is reset, means the devices are not ready. But CPU has to constantly monitor. So that was the drawback of programmed IO, which can be overcome in the interrupt initiated IO. In this particular mode of transfer, the CPU need not to check the flag status. Whenever the devices are ready, they are going to issue a interrupt signal. Means on the basis of that particular interrupt, what the program, what the computer will do, the CPU will do. CPU will stop the execution of the current program and then it is going to execute whatever the uh, instruction or whatever the uh, like uh, task that is to be done. It means main program is being stopped and it has to execute the interrupt request, right? And after the completion of interrupt request, again, it will switch over to the main program and will execute it. So you must remember that whenever CPU is responding in view of interrupt signal, then it always store the return address from the program counter into the memory stack. And then it control the branches to a interrupt service routine wherever there is a requirement to perform the IO transfer. But there are various ways, many techniques via which branch address of the interrupt service routine that can be handled and it may vary from unit to unit. But actually there are two approaches to do is one is the vectored interrupt and other is the non-vectored interrupt. Means non-vectored interrupt where the branch address is assigned to a fixed location in the memory and vectored means is the source itself which interrupts the supplying that particular uh, source that is going to define the address means that is what the interrupt vector but in some of the computers the interrupt vector is the first address of the IO interrupt service routine while in some of the other computers vector is an address which is actually pointing a location in the memory and that particular location which defines which denotes the beginning address of the IO. But here the objective is what when the interrupt request is being generated, CPU will stop the execution of the main program, will handle the interrupt signal and then it will switch over to the main program. So the advantages of interrupt initiated IO, it is fast and efficient, but there are certain limitations and disadvantage means it would be difficult uh, to get to various pieces of work which is to be done together means that implementation could be difficult since it requires some hardware also. So that is to be done by the manufacturer. As you can see in this particular diagram and as I have told you that interrupt techniques that actually require some hardware and software. Hardware may be relatively complex, but the combination of the, or the use of this hardware and software, it makes the overall system very, very efficient. Means CPU efficiency, which was not used in better way in programmed IO, that could be utilized in the case of the interrupt initiator initiated IO. Here you can see this particular diagram, it shows simple interrupt processing means from CPU point of view, both hardware and software, these parts have been shown. Suppose we, you are talking about the IO, input output devices who are like uh, requesting for the data transfer. Suppose we are pressing a keyboard. 
keyboard is the input means whatever the uh, like we are going to write it that is going to be stored into a memory location that is what the input interrupt if there is a requirement to display something on the monitor so if monitor is raising an interrupt it means the required data which is to be displayed that is to be taken from the memory and will be displayed at the monitor that is what the output interrupt right so that is why input output device inter can initiate the interrupts and accordingly data transfer can be done so when you are talking about this particular process and if we are observing from the cpu point of view what happens when device controller or any of the system hardware whenever it is going to issue an interrupt then processor which is executing the current instruction that particular current instruction will be executed and now processor will acknowledge in view of that particular interrupt means now processor is ready to execute the interrupt uh, whatever the next task which is going to assign to you it means processor pushes psw program status word and program counter into the control stack then it loads new program counter value depending upon the interrupt which kind of like instruction which is to be executed and then it save remainder of the process state information every information will be like stored over there that will be kept intact and then process interrupt that particular thing will be done then after the completion of that particular task it will restore the original information and will restore the old means the program status word in program counter value related to the main program which it was executed earlier and then it will resume the whole of the services so as i told you that interrupt implementation means implementing interrupt that could be done in various ways at the same time now we are uh, talking about one interrupt but there may be multiple interrupts multiple devices may be attached with those particular device those uh, that particular processor and many devices may request the interrupt it means now multiple interrupts have been initiated and those have those interrupts needs to be serviced so priority interrupt it is a process it is a technique via which the interrupt which is having the higher priority that is being serviced first and in the last lowest priority interrupt is being serviced it means priority interrupt it will determine among the generated request that which interrupt is to be serviced first when there is a uh, initiation of more than two requests right so means in case of the multiple interrupt request the priority interrupt will determine which interrupt is having the higher for highest priority that will be serviced first and the accordingly the lowest priority these one and in the last the uh, the interrupt which is having the least priority that is going to be serviced since we are talking about priority interrupt so this can be implemented by a software and by hardware also so implementing priority interrupt by software this technique is also known as a polling you must remember it polling means here the priority is established means suppose there are five devices 1 2 3 4 5 all devices are generating the interrupts right it means the priority is to be established and this particular establishment of priority that is being done by the order of polling the device means interrupt sources and this actually defines identifies the which uh, device is having highest priority and accordingly that is to be serviced first the highest priority interrupt is to be serviced first means all the devices are connected via a common branch via which they can generate their request and program polls the interrupt sources which are coming in sequence accordingly the highest priority will be serviced first it is very flexible because it is going to be implemented with the software just you are writing a program and accordingly that program will gives you the priorities and accordingly it is going to be executed so it is having a low cost because there is a requirement of very little hardware this is what the polling software approach when we are talking about the hardware approach it is relatively complex the cost is relatively high 
in this hardware approach there are two uh, commonly used approaches you must be uh, learning uh, in this particular video itself so this hardware approach it requires a priority interrupt manager this is actually accepting this manager is accepting all the interrupt request and then it is going to determine which is having the highest priority the same as the polling but this is the hardware approach this is fast because the identification of highest priority interrupt that is being identified by the hardware it is fast also because we are saying each interrupt source that has its own interrupt vector means that particular interrupt vector is directly access to their interrupt service routine interrupt service routine means each and every vector address each and every device is having its own address having their own service routine that is going to be executed for them so there is the uh, priority interrupt implementation with the help of the hardware approach also first let us talk about the daisy chain priority interrupt this is the hardware approach and this approach is almost similar to the polling one because here the devices are going to do the polling itself you can see in this particular diagram there are three devices device 1 device 2 and device 3 all the devices all these devices are connected via a common data bus right at the same time you must remember since all the devices are connected in a chain manner in right that is why this is known as a daisy chain priority interrupt method the device one this is having the highest priority and device three that is having the lowest priority vad means vector address now let us understand this particular diagram if the there are three devices connected suppose all the devices are initiating a interrupt request so when device 1 is initiated a interrupt request this is being sent on this line device 2 on this device 3 on this it means interrupt signal will be given to the cpu so what happened interrupt is what you can understand when in when io device is ready for data transfer then interface unit sends a interrupt signal and this interrupt signal is sent to the cpu so cpu will stop the execution of the current program and will handle the interrupt right that is what so interrupt request by these devices will be received by the cpu int is the interrupt and in view of this interrupt cpu will issue the interrupt acknowledgement right so in view of this interrupt request cpu will issue the interrupt acknowledgement and you can see interrupt acknowledgement is being applied to this p1 this is the input input to device 1 and p0 is the output to this particular device right so now what will happen when interrupt acknowledgement is being given by the cpu then first it is to be received by device 1 now it has to be checked whether the device 1 has initiated an interrupt request or not let us assume that device 1 has initiated an interrupt request it means now this particular address vad VAD is what this vector address device this is the vector address of device one so vector address of device one means the isr interrupt service routine address of this particular device this is to be loaded into the cpu you can see this vad vector address isr address will be loaded into the cpu and when this is being loaded into the cpu it means cpu executes the device one interrupt service routine interrupt service routine of device one is being executed but now let us assume that device one has not issued the interrupt request now what will happen this interrupt acknowledgement signal it will be transferred to the device 2 because device 1 has not initiated so now it will be transferred to the device 2 so the same process if the device 2 has initiated an interrupt request means its vector address is being identified vector address means the isr address is to be loaded into the cpu and cpu will execute the device 2 interrupt service routine and if this is also not initiated the interrupt request now this acknowledgement signal will be transferred to the device 
3. So in this similar manner, the whole process continues. Means if first device is to be checked, then the second device is to be checked, then the third device means this is a kind of polling. So this is also a time taking process sometimes because one by one each and every device is getting the control and that's priority is to be check whether that has initiated a request or not and accordingly the CPU will execute the task. So this is the daisy chain priority but the limitation is it is also a time taking process. Next is the parallel priority interrupt. Parallel priority interrupt, this is also a hardware approach. You can see this particular diagram, which is the parallel priority interrupt. You can see on the left hand side, there is an interrupt register and mask register. So the number of interrupt registers and mask registers must be same. Interrupt registers means connected with uh, in view of each and every device, there is one register. In this particular diagram, disk printer, reader, keyboard. Four devices have been connected means four interrupt registers 0, 1, 2, 3 and if there are four interrupt registers means definitely the mask registers must be four. So n number of devices must be may be connected and accordingly same number of interrupt registers may be available over there. And you must remember in this particular case, in this particular diagram, the lower the value, 0 means highest priority, 3 means lowest priority, right? This is the highest priority, means this is to be serviced first and lowest priority keyboard that is to be serviced last. For this mask register, you must remember that it must contain the values 1, means each and every value in the mask register, it must be equal to 1. So what will happen? This particular value 1 will be applied to all these AND gates AND is what the multiplication here multiplication of, uh, is going to be performed. So let us assume that this particular disk if this disk has initiated an interrupt request it means 1 will be available interrupt is request is being generated 1 1 and output of this will be 1. It means this particular interrupt will be serviced first. Here you can see the priority encoder. Priority encoder, it handles 2 raised to the power n inputs and it is capable to process it at n outputs. In this particular diagram, you can see there are 4 inputs. Two, 4 means 2 raised to the power 2. It means the value of n is 2. It means how many output lines? 2 output lines x and y these lines these are the output lines you must remember ist is the interrupt status ien is interrupt enable flip flop this is this shows the status and this is the interrupt enable flip flop Right. Now you can see this particular truth table, truth table which shows the relationship in between the input and output. You can see the inputs to this priority encoder i0, i1, i2, i3. All inputs I have written. Output is x, y and ist, interrupt status. Right. This is what the uh, truth table. So now let us see how this particular truth table is being designed. So in this particular case, as you are aware that the values in the mask registers must be 1. If disk, which is the highest priority interrupt, right, It's uh, this is of highest priority. If disk has initiated an interrupt request, I0 will be serviced. So you can see I0 is 1 means disk has generated interrupt and the rest of the devices I1, I2, I3 these are disables now because first the highest priority interrupt is to be serviced. It means what is the output? I0. X and Y will be 0, 0. The second case if we are saying that the printer has initiated a interrupt. It means disk has not initiated. Now the printer has initiated the second uh, highest priority is of printer. It means you can see I0 is 0, disk has not generated any interrupt, but now printer has generated the interrupt, so I1 is 1. And when printer is uh, interrupt is to be serviced, we need not to look for reader and keyboard, so these are nothing but the disable. So when it has generated the interrupt, this is 1, 1, this 1 will be serviced. It means output is I1, you can see 0, 1. 
Third case, when reader is initiating the interrupt, means first two device disk and printers, they are not generating any interrupt. It means it has generated, so no need to check for the keyboard. And the fourth case is, when keyboard has initiated an interrupt, means all the previous three devices, disk, printer and readers, they are not initiating. See, so for the uh, fourth case, when we are talking about the key, uh, keyboard, is means what is the output? Output must be I3 means x and y will be 1 1 right and last the case when none of the device has initiated the interrupt whatever the cpu is executing that is to be executed means output will be x and y we need not to care about it whatever it is whatever the cpu is being executing that is to be done but interrupt ist means interrupt status will be zero in this case there is no interrupt is being initiated so you can see in all these four cases, interrupt may be initiated either by disk or printer or reader or through the keyboard. So this is how parallel priority interrupt is being executed. So from here you have observed that the output of this is X and Y, right? At the same time you can see IST is the interrupt status. Interrupt status, it must be one. You have seen from this particular condition, interrupt status is one means then only there is an interrupt request being initiated by any of the device. So interrupt status must be one. It means one will be available at this point. One will be available at this point. Interrupt enable flip-flop. It must also be one means then only it is going to initiate. So when it is also one, it means one is available at this point and one is available at this point. For this particular AND gate, let us say this is one number AND gate, this is two number AND gate. For this two number AND gate, there are two inputs, one, one, output is one. So when IST, interrupt status is one, enable flip-flop is one, it means interrupt is given to the CPU, right? And when CPU has stopped, CPU has received the interrupt and CPU is giving the interrupt acknowledgement back so when cpu is giving the interrupt acknowledgement back it means it will send one when it is one so for this and gate this will also be one which is the interrupt acknowledgement and as soon as it will get the interrupt acknowledgement the output of and one number gate this will be one why because all the three inputs are now one so when all the three inputs are one output will be one it means it will enable the bus buffer and accordingly data transfer will occur so this is how you can understand how parallel priority interrupt is can be implemented thank you so much for watching this video 